Yeah, dear students, uh, we are back with you. We are preparing and making sure that our next session uh, takes off smoothly. I can see many of you are logged in. Uh, you are also chatting. Wilson Bovi, uh, you can see your chat. Kialo, Diana, Dinda, Karibu. Dennis Ouma, uh, I can see Kalondu, I can see Charlene Tororo, mm, Abiud Osare, many, many of you, Audrey, Chepiator. Just to remind you before others come in, uh, we said that. Uh, you should not share your phone numbers on this platform because these uh, uh, this, uh, sessions are being viewed all over the world by different people, some of them who are even not students or staff of the University of Embu. So if you share your numbers here, you may be a candidate for uh, con people who may attempt to to defraud you or con you so kindly do not share your number here even if you want to know uh, your colleague your comrades you can uh, side side chat them if possible or see how to connect but don't share your number on the platform so i leave you with the today i want you to to listen to the sda choir seventh day adventist group uh, enjoy this. Uh, we will begin at exactly 11, which is about 5 to 6 minutes from now. Enjoy the SDA choir as they sing and entertain you. Karibuni. Oh, God. 
Good afternoon. Let us pray for this session to begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we come before you this time of the day. We give thanks for giving us life again. Lord, as we go through the session, we request for your blessings. Be with us and see us through. Once we are through, Remind us to say thank you. We pray this in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I take the opportunity to introduce the Dean of Students, Professor Prentice Yoka. Please, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mbunzi. Good morning, students parents, guardians, and our listeners, and those watching us, I welcome you to today's orientation program, which is being streamed live from the University of Embu. Today, the weather in Embu is good, and I believe it's also okay with you wherever you are. Today's session, we are going to introduce you to the Dean of Students Affairs, also, we introduce you to various hands of sections and also to the directors of various departments of the university. For better interaction today, on the right side of your screen, there is the live chat whereby you can send your questions and the team that is with me is going to answer to your questions. Also, we are discouraging chats that are not relevant to this orientation. As we start our orientation, may I note that the materials that are going to be covered in this session were already sent to you and uh, we expected you to have looked through. As we start, may I take this opportunity to introduce members of staff who are with me and I'm going to start with the chairman of the student organization, Wesa, Mr. Moses Ogweno. Good morning, everyone. 
Welcome to the University of Embu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bueno. Next is the Director, Academic Quality Assurance, Dr. Anna Karuri. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to University of Embu. Thank you. Next is the Director, Timetabling and Teaching Programs, Mr. Stephen Mbunzi. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome for this orientation today. Thank you. Next is Head of Health Services, Madam Agnes Kome. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Next is the coordinator, Sports and Games, Mr. David Macharia. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to University of Empu. Next is the Head of Finance, Mr. Lawrence Kamonjo. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to University of Embu. We have the Head of Accommodation, Mr. Peter Ndrango. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to University of Embu. Glad to have you. And the last but not least is the Director, University Examinations, Dr. Charles Onyari. Good morning, all. Welcome to the University of Embu. Thank you. In today's program, we are going to deal with the student support services and also with the academic matters of this university. And I'll go forward now and introduce the Office of the Dean of Student Affairs. I congratulate you on your admission to the University of Embu, a place you are going to be for the last four years. You are going to call this your home. The roles of the Dean of Students' Office, one, we are a link between the university and the students. And for this purpose, we have the chairman of the student organization, Mr. Moses Ogweno, who will take a brief moment to welcome you to this university. Mr. Moses. To our first year students, parents, guardians, and other listeners, good morning. I am Moses Ogweno, the chairperson, USA. Allow me to take this opportunity to express my hearty congratulations to our first year student for having performed exemplary well and for securing a chance in this great university. Congratulations. The University of Embu Student Association, USA, is a student government that works closely with the Office of the Dean of Students in addressing students' welfare-related issues and to ensure that students get the best in the university. Just to mention a few, US government has a financial kitty dubbed One Shilling Foundation. The kitty gets its financial support from well-wishers who includes students, University of Embu staff, friends of the university, and other people. The kitty aims at as, as assisting the needy students. Uh, the university also runs a financial kitty, which is again financed by the University of Embu staff. The vice chancellor, Professor Daniel Mugendi, is one of the key contributors to this kitty. I encourage those of you who have little or who can get financial donations from their parents, guardians, brothers, sisters, and friends to assist in contributing to these very important kitties. As a student body, we have seen so many extremely needy student 
assisted by these kitties. The university as, as well as, as, a, as a well as established endowment fund, the fund is also contributory and it gets fund from all students and staff. The fund is expected to be self-sustaining with the, with the time after it, after it, it raises adequate funds. It is aimed again at assisting needy students. Since it, its inception, I urge you to support it. US government provides a cool environment for sporting activities, entertainment, as well as academics. Welcome to the University of Embu, where knowledge transforms. My, my advice to new students, let's not take education as preparation for life, but instead take education as life itself. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Uesa, for good address and welcoming students to this university. We'll go forward as I talk about the roles of the Office of the Dean of Students. One, we have agreed that we coordinate student matters. We also coordinate chaplaincy matters. Here in the university, we have the Catholics, we have the Protestants, the Muslims, and the SDA. We also have counseling services. We have the student counselor and also we have the peer counselors in the university. Also, we coordinate entertainments in the university. We usually have the famous Freshers' Night. We also have the Carl Fest and many, many others. One of the very important work or roles of the Dean of Students' Office is to implement rules and the regulations of students' code of conduct. Another role of the Dean of Students' Office is financial aid program whereby the most needed students are usually supported. The Office of the Dean of Students liaises with the parents, it liaises with the police, with the community, with the sponsors to sort matters pertaining to the students. For parents who might be listening to us, please make sure you have an update on the welfare of your students as they come to this university. As a parting shot, may I note that when you come to the university, you are going to have a lot of freedom, but remember, freedom goes along with responsibilities. Also, when you come, remember not to enter into activities that may land you into trouble. Take good care of your belongings, the laptops, and the phones. Don't be involved in unlawful activities such as localization and also terrorism. Also remember to budget properly for yourself. In the university, we usually say that at the beginning of a semester, students usually eat chicken and animal products. At the, be at the middle of the semester, they become a bit broke. They start now eating the animal products. And we usually say at the end of the semester, if they have not budgeted properly, they end up eating just like the animals or the chicken. So kindly be a good planner of your time and of your money. Adhere to the university dress code. There is a modest way of dressing which is defined by the university, which will be expecting you to follow. Also, when you come associate with the raw models, some may be students, others may be staff and take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way. We are going to have very many seminars, very many trainings, job opportunities. Please take hold of them. I welcome you to the University of Embu, where knowledge transforms. This time, I want to welcome the Head of Finance. I know you have had several issues, Mr. Lawrence Kamonjo, to take a few minutes and talk about financial matters. Thank you.
Good morning once again. Uh, mine is to talk briefly about uh, finance department, student finance, and uh, fee payment in general. Um, it's good to note that uh, finance department is a support department and uh, its core function is to receive and manage finances of the university. It's a big department with six sections, among them student finance. On student finance, uh, this is a unit that is very important, will be very important to you as a student because you will be our main customer. The student finance section is automated and therefore you will be able to transact and interact with us without having necessarily to come to our offices physically. However, for transactions and inquiries that are complex in nature, you may be advised to physically come to our offices. Uh, in due course, you will be shown where our offices are, so that uh, in case of any inquiry, you will be f f full aware of uh, where to find us. On student, uh, on fee payment, the bank details are clearly provided in the university website on the fee structure and in the student portal. So allow me not to take you through that because uh, the details are accessible through those uh, platforms I've mentioned. In terms of uh, payment of fees, students, I wish to mentioned that the university does not accept fee in form of hard cash. So it is very important that uh, any payment be made through our bank accounts as well as through our pay bill account. Regarding payment of fees, it is important to note that uh, all students are required to pay fees from the very first day of the semester. And all fees shall be payable in full before the registration deadline that will be communicated from time to time by the university. However, considering that uh, we hail from different backgrounds, with varying financial abilities, any student who may not be able to pay fee in full will have three options. The first one being, and I believe this should come last, taking academic leave or deferring studies so that you get time out, look for money, and come back when you have a uh, full amount. The other option is to use first fee payment method, and this is where fees is paid in installment. The third option is to pay late payment penalty. And I'm going to talk briefly about the three, starting with academic leave. And in this case, students, the student is expected to apply for academic leave to the deputy vice chancellor, academic research and extension. It is good to note that once you realize that uh, 
you are not able to raise fees, you should not just disappear. There is a procedure for taking this academic leave. So there is a form that can be downloaded from the website for application of uh, call-off. After your application, a written approval for call-off will be given before commencing the academic leave. Students, it's good to note that upon call-off, your fee account will be temporarily suspended. That means it will not attract penalties or administrative fees. It's also good to note, students, that uh, deferment means on resumption. Your colleagues in the same program with you will have progressed. And therefore, they will be ahead of you and possibly may graduate before you. Having talked about academic leave, allow me to proceed to the second option, which is first fee payment. This arrangement allows students to pay fees in installments as follows. 50% of the fee payable should be paid within the first three weeks of the semester. The remaining half is paid in two equal installments of 25%. And the first installment should be paid by the end of the seventh week. The other installment should be paid three weeks to the start of examinations for the semester. At the first fee arrangement, a student is charged a monthly administrative fee on outstanding balance at the rate of 2.5%. So that means that uh, any student, for example, with a balance of 1,000, will be required to pay uh, administrative fee of 25 shilling. So it's an affordable fee. Next, students like to talk about uh, late fee payment penalty, which is our third option. And this applies to students who are not able to pay 50% of fee payable before registration deadline and wish to register for the semester. Please note, the policy of the university, as I stated, is fee should be paid in full. But the university, because we value you as our most important customer, came up with these other arrangements. Starting with first fee payment. Now the other one is late fee payment. With first fee, we talked about payment of 50% before registration. Now with late fee payment penalty, this is where a student is not able to raise even that 50%. And the student is willing to continue attending classes is willing to remain around. In this case, the student will be required to pay a one-off penalty over and above the monthly administrative fee of 2.5% on the outstanding fee balance. And the current applicable amount for the penalty is 3,000 shilling. Please note that uh, for you to get exam card or permission to sit for your examinations, you'll be required to have cleared your fees for the semester. As I conclude, I'd like to address two queries that were raised by the students through the public chat. 
and one of them wanted to know uh, when the deadline for fee payment is. And uh, response to that is that students are required to pay fees from the very first day of semester. And all semester fees shall be payable in full before the registration deadline for the semester. However, for planning purposes, please ensure that full amount is paid within the first three weeks of the semester. So I've addressed that one. The other one is how will one get confirmation of fee payment? Fee payment is confirmed by visiting your fee account in the student portal. All fees payments are posted by the student finance to the student accounts within 24 hours such that if you make a payment like now and you can try this within 24 hours that amount will have reflected in your fee account and you'll be able to see that if you visit your account in the student portal uh, to note students is that uh, during payment remember because there are those various platforms through which you can pay your fees, remember to capture your admission number correctly and in full. In addition, please keep your deposit slip or pay bill message so that in case posting is not done, we are human beings and money is to error, you can use that deposit slip or the pay bill message to make a follow-up. Otherwise, once again, I welcome you to University of Embu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kamonjo, Hand of Finance, for enlightening us on matters touching on finance. Now, I'll go on on other support services and I'll mention very briefly about the animations office. The head of animations is Madam Liz Morugi, and their main work, they say, is to link your dreams with your future. They process animation of students to the university. They organize for orientation, as we are doing now. They conduct registration of new and continuing students, and they process student request among many other functions. Another support service is accommodation. The hand of accommodation is Mr. Peter Ndrango. Now the university has available accommodation on first come first served basis. Accommodation is built on a line. I know a question has come on that. And due to the limited spaces available in the hostels, Application that does not automatically mean you have secured a place. Priority is basically given to people living with disabilities and also the first year. So I would say you are lucky. You will be prioritized when it comes to accommodation. Our hostels are named after prominent landmarks in this country. We have Kremambogo, Menengai, we have Taita Hills, we have Mount Kenya. Abadeas, Kremanjaro, and many others. The capacities and the changes are usually communicated to students from time to time. Students who cannot really secure accommodation within the university, we support them so that they are housed near the university by external hostel owners. The university has a memorandum of understanding with Emu Hoa. This is Embu University Hostel Owners Association. This is a registered group with the Kenya Registrar of Societies, and they are very close to the university. We hold several meetings with them. We inspect their hostels, and we make a recommended list of hostels. So my encouragement is when you come to the university,
please go to a, uh, to a hostel that is registered and recommended by the university. Otherwise, if you go anywhere else, we are not able to help you sort your issues. I highly recommend that parents who are with us, they know where their students or their sons and daughters are accommodated in a case of an eventuality. Apart from the hostels, we also have accommodation for the postgraduate students. We also have a guest house for university visitors. On the catering, the catering department offers meals on a pair as you eat basis. Student dining hall, which is commonly referred to as the mess, is opened 24 7 and all the days of the week, including holidays, simply because we don't allow students to cook in the hostels. Meals are often depending on the taste, on the student's preference, and on the size of the student pocket. Our costs are usually subsidized. Usually, menu is posted on the entrance. A student chooses their preference. They pay at the cashier and they are usually served. Menus keep changing depending on the recommendations from the students. I would say that the quality of food and the standards are usually checked by the university public health officer who checks on all that whatever we are eating is up to standard. We have main student or uh, student uh, we have the main student mess and we have other eateries within the university. I am happy to note that all the products used in our eateries, most of them originate from the university farm, meaning they are fresh and they are well checked. I take this opportunity to welcome the head health services, Madam Agnes Kome, to tell you something small about the health services. Thank you. Good morning, students, once more. I welcome you to this session, all my listeners. As you have been told, I'm Agnes Kome, Head of Health Services. Again, let me welcome you to the University of Embu, specifically Department of Health Services. At the Department of Health Services, we offer various, we offer various services, and we offer them at campus. One, Curative services. When the student falls sick at the campus, you, you are treated using student identity card that you identify yourself at the clinic. After assessment by the clinicians, and they found out that you need further treatment while at the campus, we refer you, we have an ambulance, we refer you to EMBO Level 5 Public Hospital. The institution, that is the University of EMBO, pays for all outpatient services to all students. In case you require admission, we, ad we admit you at that Level 5 Hospital, but your guardians, parents, they pay the fees, the full inpatient fees in that hospital. And if you require emergency operation, the, all the students who are under 18 years, they sign, they sign an operation emergency form and we take it up from there. We inform the parents and the guardians when their students are sick and also when they are admitted in the hospital. If the parents feel that they want to take the students to another hospital, we allow that for admission. But first they have to inform the head of health services and also the dean of student as they take the student away from the hospital. We also offer prevention and promotion that is, we offer immunization, tetanus toxoid in our facility. We also do individual counseling to students 
and also health advices. If the students come to the health clinic, we offer uh, counseling and also we advise them accordingly to their health. The department also organizes sensitizations, that is health education for students, seminars and trainings of, uh, of health. If you get invitation to attend, please don't miss the opportunity and don't, and don't miss to attend. Good health always starts with you. In case you have any chronic illness or long-term illness and you are under medication, please, when you come to the campus, you report to the Department of Health Services for follow-up and also we facilitate your doctor's appointments. And we also follow you with quality care while in campus. So please inform the department on any chronic illness or long-term illness. Finally, we, we are still in COVID-19 era. I urge you stay safe, sanitize, wear mask, and make sure you, there is social distance wherever you are. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Head of Healthy Services, Madam Kome, for very good ones of what we'll have when you come. You are assured that your health will be taken care of. I proceed with the coordinator of sports and games, and somebody said that all work, no play, makes Jack a dull boy. The sports and games department knows this very well, and we have very many activities that take place in this university. We have so many games, which include football, basketball, rugby, tennis, we have athletics, and almost all types of games, including swimming. We have organized with a neighbor that whoever needs to learn swimming or to do some swimming, that can be organized. The sports and games department coordinates many other things. They train coaches. They select university athletes. They also facilitate movement of those teams from one place to the other. They also recommend students to national teams. May I note that the games department has tournaments. Some are internal between one hostel and the other. Between year ones and the other years, we also have open tournaments and we also participate in the national and sometimes international games. I'm happy to report that our teams here are, un are unbeatable. Last year, we have brought almost all trophies from this country. So when you join us, the hand of sports and games encourages you to remain faithful to your team. Come and you will discover new talents, especially those which are connected with the games and the sports. I want to move to message from the hand of security, Mr. Kerade, who is not absent. The university has this department of security services, and their main aim is that to ensure that there is peace and order in the university. They undertake a number of activities, and one of them is to apprehend offenders. They investigate incidences. They take custody of lost and found items, and also they sensitize students on security matters, such as radicalization and terrorism. Also, they monitor what happens within and outside the university. You will note that when you enter any part of this university, they, at the entrance, there are the security guns who take care of you. May I note that we need peace in the university, and in the case one of you becomes so unruly, we have a holding place. We usually call it the cell. It's not a real cell, but if there's a place, you can be apprehended. So students are reminded to observe the student code of conduct when inside and outside the university. I wish to note that since most of you students are over 18, the rule of the Kenyan law supersedes any other law. When you commit a crime out there, the law takes its course. You might call us, but we might not help much. But we are wishing well. We believe we are not going to have issues with that. I take this opportunity now to turn to the academic 
departments or the academic support services. And with us, we have the director, university examinations, Dr. Charles Onyari, who is briefly going to tell us about examinations. Even as he comes, remember, cheating is a crime. Welcome, Dr. Onyari. Uh, thank you all and students welcome again to the University of Embu. Uh, mine would be brief, but I want to talk of mainly uh, that once you have gone through the learning process, we need to see whether you have uh, actually internalized what you have learned in class and elsewhere, like for example in the field work or in the labs. And that calls now for the area of exams. Now, in the examinations, the university has a directorate of university examinations. And I want to start by saying that uh, we have two main types of exams. There's what we call the continuous assessment uh, tests, uh, which we have two of them, which you sit one uh, about five weeks after you have uh, been to the university, another one around the 10th week. It's good to note here that the continuous assessment also includes assignments and the practicals or any other work that the relevant lecturer will give you. And that accounts for 30 your total score. The other exam is the end semester exam which is done at the end of the semester uh, and that accounts for 70 percent. Note that these exams are have a process through which they are conducted. First the exams are set at the respective departments by the lecturers and then they undergo a moderation both at the department and later on uh, externally. In other words, we have external uh, people who moderate the exams to ensure that they are of a good quality and standard. Then they are, once they reach the exam service, they are typeset and prepared, ready uh, for seating. In other words, we print them, we typeset, and then we store, and at the same time then give them out to be administered. Now, during the administration, you must have uh, you must have registered as a student and because of that then you will be able to, given, to be given an examination card. The examination card is now what would give you a uh, leeway or a, a room for you to, to enable you to do the exam. Now, once the exam has been done, uh, then it is again marked by the lecturers and then undergoes again the same moderation as it went before in the department and then at the school and finally at the Senate. So that we have, we have three levels of approvals. Now, all this, of course, uh, is achieved through various regulations and policies, which you'll come to learn, and probably you have heard uh, about them if you have gone through the Student Code of Conduct uh, booklet. Now, it is important to know that misconduct of any nature during exams or around the time of exams will run you into trouble, and uh, such misconduct will either be in the exam room or just around the exam room, and they may include, but not limited to, uh, having materials relevant to the exam, but which you are not supposed to carry, including uh, electronic gadgets like your mobile uh, phones. Now, if you are caught, for example, uh, with exam irregularities, what happens is that there is a, a disciplinary uh, a committee that will look into your case to ascertain that actually the misconduct was uh, committed, and if so, then it will mean that you will be expelled from the university. However, we have room for appeal. And therefore, you are allowed to make an appeal if you feel that the judgment was not proper uh, for you. So cheating of any form is therefore highly forbidden. Now, once you go you through your four years, uh, you will graduate. And after graduation, now, be before we go to the graduation, I want to mention that once the exam is done and has been approved by the Senate, you will be given a sad slip to indicate the levels or the, the grades which you have scored for that semester. And uh, for the two semesters, at the end of the two semesters, that's your academic year, your results will co be combined. And if you have areas where probably you have failed, then you will be referred to redo the exam. But there will be levels. If you have failed, for example, a given percentage, like let's say 70% and above, then you are likely to, uh, to be expelled. But if you have uh, up to around 30%, then you will be allowed to redo the exams and continue. I want to mention that now, assuming you have gone through your four years, then you will graduate. 
and at this time now, the desired sleep will now be called a transcript because it combines all your performance grades from first year to your fourth year. Plus, of course, the certificate indicating the grade you got and the program which you were uh, pursuing. In case there is need for replacement, maybe for one reason or the other, you may either lose your certificate or transcript or it may be spoiled, then there is room for you to request for either replacement, but in that case, we'll give you a copy, or if you want your copies to be certified, then you are welcome for the same. Uh, during this certification, then uh, what happens is that if you have scored between 40 and 49 uh, percent, then you are, graded, you are given a pass if you get 50 to 59 percent mean grade at the final, then that will be uh, second class honors lower division, and 60 to 69 is a uh, second class uh, the, uh, second class honors upper division. If you have over 70 percent your mean grade in the final, the fourth year, then it means that yours will be a first class. As I wind up, I want to mention that there are times when you may not be able to sit for the exams for special reasons. In that case, therefore, you will apply to be given uh, special exams. And as I mentioned earlier, if you had failed certain units, then you will be given a supplementary exam. At times, you may not be comfortable that the grade you got is the, what you could actually have gotten. And we have room that for you can appeal for that particular exam uh, to be remarked. Once again, I want to welcome you and congratulate you for having made it to join our university. Thank you. Thank you, Director University Examinations, for that highlight on the examinations. Now, I want to go on and tell you about the university library. The librarian is Mr. Njue James. But today is represented by Madam Victoria Nyaga. And very briefly, I will mention that we have a very modern library which offers online and also face-to-face -face services. During this COVID-19 pandemic, the uh, library has organized, or now you can borrow a book, but that book goes to isolation after you have used. Also, they have a facility whereby you can book a reading space online. When it is available, you are informed, you can come do your work, and then they leave you. The library has online public catalog, whereby there are thousands of catalog, whereby you can do your research from the electronic resources. The library also, also keeps the past papers. This enables students to equip themselves on the upcoming exams. Very important information is that once you become a University of Embu student, you get a university account and you are free to borrow books from the library and you are also free to have other services. The library from one time to the other keeps educating and making seminars for our students and these are some of the opportunities we are saying please take good uh, good care of those opportunities. I want to talk about the timetabling and the teaching programs. The director is Mr. Stephen Mbunzi. Their work is to prepare teaching and examination timetables. They allocate teaching halls. They also make sure that these halls are conducive for learning. A timetable is like a, comp a compass for a traveler. So for you in the university, even when you are not within, this is the compass which will be directing you when we have classes and we don't have. Now, I want to mention something little about how you read a timetable. One, the timetable is going to be released, I'm informed, before the end of September, so that by 7th when we start off, you are going to have your timetables. Now, we read our timetables from left to right. On the far left side, you'll find your course you are taking, followed by your year. For example, if you are taking Bachelor of Commerce, you'll see become Y1S1. Y means year one, S means semester one. So for now, when you receive your timetables, go for the course you are doing, and look for Y1 and S1. 
Now, our timetable moves from 7 a.m. all the way to 7 p.m. We denote those, the hours in Kiswahili. When you see one, it means in Samonja Subui. When you see two, ni sambili. Three, satatu. So you see one, two, three, all the way. When you see twelve, ni sakumi nambili. And when you see thirteen, ni samonja ya usiku. So that is how we read our timetable. You have these materials, you can familiarize yourself with them. Please make sure you are sure where you are going for classes early enough. Don't read your timetable when classes are just starting. We have the Directorate of Academic Quality Assurance, and I'm happy to report that quality for this university is of great essence. Now, the university, I think we are the only university in Kenya who have two quality certificates. One is the QMS, Quality Management System, and the other one is the ISMS, Information Security Man Management System. Those things you can see are the footer of every letter that you receive from the university. This Department of Academic Quality Assurance monitors and makes sure that academic processes are monitored throughout. And academic processes start as early as now. This orientation is being monitored and we expect at the end of it, you are going to mark there's an assessment at the end of today's icon whereby we expect you to assess how it has gone on. Quality teaching and learning include monitoring of student admissions, how the semester takes off, class attendance, how exams were conducted, and many others. They are written there. At the end of every semester, students are expected to fill in, to evaluate their lecturer, and this information is very key. It is tabled to Senate, and it is used for the next purposes. I'll go to the Directorate of e-learning. Now, the Director of e-learning is Professor Sperenza Ndege. She's not with us today because on Friday the whole day, you have a whole session on e-learning. Please attend because this is the way to go. She will be, la she will be talking to you the whole day, so on Friday you expect her. Then, Last but not least, we have the Directorate of the uh, Board of the Director Board of Postgraduate Studies. This board is headed by Professor Nancy Bundambula. All students are encouraged to pursue further studies after the first degree. Please, when you come to the university, aim higher. Here we offer all kinds of degrees, starting from diploma. We expect after your first degree, you join now the master's and your PhD. This directorate of postgraduate was formed or established in 2011. And as we talk today, we have 300 master's students and 160 PhD students. I'm just challenging and saying that you are potential postgraduate students. And it all depends on you. And it all starts from now. So we wish to see you in that postgraduate after your four years. Thank you so much. I continue saying that in the case you have queries, you might be having questions, we have the public chats on your right side of your screen. You can send them there and you'll be answered. And I believe the orientation will go on well. For now, I don't have any questions that I should answer. And if it arise, then I'll come in. Otherwise, I think I didn't introduce myself. I am Professor Frederick Mugendi Njoka. I am an associate professor in the School of Agriculture. My specialization is plant breeding and genetics. And I'm also the dean of students. Thank you so much. So I'm back again. 
uh, as I told you, my name is Maure. I'm uh, moderating the program for this orientation the entire week. And uh, I can see Professor Nancy Budambula is also joined us. The YouTube, Karib Sana Professor. I'm sure the students who are chatting there are able to chat with you. Professor Nancy Budambula is the director of the Board of Postgraduate Studies. I'm sure you can see her name down there or up there. Please say hi to her. Uh, as we near the end of this session, there are some questions that have been posted by you people. Some we are going to try to answer here, uh, while others we will uh, keep them and uh, give you answers in the course of the orientation week. This is also to remind you that uh, all the information that you are getting here is contained in the uh, documents and materials that were sent to you and each session has a documentation accompanying it about all the services offered so you can review those materials and read them at your own time and most certainly don't forget to refer to the student's handbook which has a lot of information even on some of the questions you are asking like deadline for fees payment you will be able to see even the plans that are available for for you to pay your fees um, there's one question here just before we uh, handle the others by one of you about health services I would like to invite the head of the health unit Madam Agnes to come and answer this question is specifically because your health is very important. Agnes. Okay, thank you and welcome once again. One student has asked whether they, they pay the fee when they come to the hospital, mm -hmm. whether the services are free. I want, that, I want to answer that question one, as I have just elaborated, the outpatient services, it's free, the university pays, and the Department of Health Services have a good, well-equipped pharmacy, has a well-equipped medical laboratory diagnostic services. So we offer all the medication in the University of Embu, and in case your diagnosis is Fatma, you are very sick, that's when we refer you to EMBO level 5. But the inpatient services, when you are admitted in any hospital, the guardians and the parents pays for the medication given in that hospital. I hope I have answered your questions. Thank you. Everyone is asking about deadline for fees payment. In fact, someone has said, Jibuni Maswali knew what. As I said, the deadline for fees payment and the plan for fees payment and the different ways you can pay fees are all in the student's handbook that has been sent to you, to your email. Uh, it is also available on the university website www.embuni.ac.ke So any question you have about fees payment, you will be able to read that in the student handbook. It tells you from the beginning of the semester how much you can pay at the beginning, after three weeks, in the middle, and at the point of examinations. So please read that. I also would like to mention that uh, some of you are posting inappropriate posts on the chat. And as we have said, we, have, uh, we are following these uh, sessions very keenly. 
And uh, the moment you register to be a student of the University of Embu, then automatically you become subject to the code of conduct governing the student's uh, behavior. So kindly desist from posting any inappropriate or unkind posts on the chat because we have a team of uh, people who are seated somewhere in a room and they are following your chats and they would like to see order and discipline maintained. Because we, in the university, we cherish order, discipline and respect. The other question that has come is, uh, does the university offer scholarships? If so, what is the procedure? Uh, this I would have wished the Dean of Students would be able to answer the question on if the university offers scholarships and if so, what is the procedure? Probably you are asking for scholarships for undergraduate, financial aid and postgraduate scholarships. Dean of Students, very briefly, we are about to close. Uh, please answer that. Thank you, Mr. Maore. I wish to note that the Dean of Students, uh, the university, does not have scholarships for undergraduates. But when you finish your first degree, there are very, very limited scholarships as at now, which I think if you perform very well. In fact, they are limited to first class honors and not just first class honors. Those who achieve first class honors and they have to be the best among the best. So scholarships are available. Also, there's another part whereby some funds are available to assist the most needed students, but this one must needs a lot of evidence from the ones who are applying. Otherwise, issues on uh, finances, those can be handled as they come, but the scholarships are available at the postgraduate level. Thank you. So thank you, Dean. Uh, a question that has just come in in capital letters, I'm sure you've seen it. Please hear me out. We went to resolve the issue of the student's portal. The ICT, head of ICT, has assured me that you will have a session with the, the ICT team tomorrow. Please check your orientation program and you'll be able to ask all questions about the student's portal. Two more questions that have come. One is how do we dress? I would have wished to give this to Dr. Milka, but uh, since she's not here, I think I will give it again to the Dean of Students because uh, dressing is a, is a very important issue in the university day-to-day -day life. Dean, please take one other minute and say something about dress code. Thank you, Mr. Maore. As I said, the university have a dress code which is quite structured. As you all expect, you don't expect yourself to dress in a manner likely to suggest. You are also not expected to dress in a way that may provoke your class. So we have agreed, it's not a uniform, please don't take this as a uniform. It is whereby you dress with the modesty. You can also dress well, but then you attract people. Some people say you are dressed like a Christmas tree. So you dress with the modesty and with the respect for both the students and the staff. And that is quite acceptable to this university. Thank you. So, uh, the last one is, uh, can I defer my studies and resume later after all these uh, problems are over or challenges? Kindly contact the admissions 
department through email or, or the telephone numbers that you have been given and they will advise you on the procedure for deferring your studies. If you are not ready to join, you can always be allowed to defer and join again next academic year which begins in September or the other academic year in 2022 or 2023. But you have, I think you have a maximum of two years to defer your studies. Within the two years, you should have uh, taken up the offer. So kindly contact the, our admissions through the emails that have been uh, posted to you in your registration documents and the telephone numbers, and they will advise you. Otherwise, dear students, uh, we have uh, reached the, the end of our session two of day two. I am happy that you are all able to be with us. Once again, I would like to really apologize for the challenge that we had in the morning. However, we were able to resolve uh, and we have gone on quite well. We are going to make arrangements to ensure that this uh, does not happen in the course of this orientation that runs from today, Monday, to Friday, uh, 4th. So, I want to ask the deputy librarian to come over and lead us in a closing prayer and we wish you a wonderful afternoon. Please join us again tomorrow from 9 a.m. as usual. Check, check the program of orientation. We have a program on the university website. You click on uh, the university website and you see the program there, orientation program. You click on it. The links are there. So you just need to click on the link and it will take you to the order of the program of the day. On the evaluation of the session, you can also find the evaluation forms on the website which you can fill and tell us how we are faring and how we can improve. So let us uh, have a closing prayer and I thank you for successfully completing the second day with us. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Victoria Nyaga. I'm the deputy librarian. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We give you thanks for being with us through this session. We thank you for the students who've been with us. And we pray, dear Lord, that you prepare, as we begin, you prepare them as we begin the new semester, oh Father. Provide for, for them as they prepare to come or to go on with their online training. We thank you for the management. We thank you for all the staff. And we pray, dear Lord, that despite all the challenges with the COVID pan pandemic, we shall get through the semester. Be with us as we begin till the end of the semester. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.